Hello and welcome to Computer Science and Engineering. My name is Mrs. Whitehead and this class is located in room 705. Computer Science and Engineering is worth one Carnegie unit so that means that it counts towards graduation. So it has an effect on your high school GPA so it is very important that we all try to do our best in this class and put forth our best work. Here is a short video about me. My name is Misty Whitehead and I am teaching computer science and engineering at Oxford Middle School for the upcoming school year. I am excited to be your teacher this year no matter the circumstances. So I hope this presentation helps you learn a little about me. I love reading and have a list of books on my to be read list. Some of my favorite series are Divergent, Harry Potter, and Miss Peregrine's books. I love Broadway, and some of my favorite shows are Wicked and Hamilton, which I was able to see at the Orphan last year. I also love coding and computer science, which I didn't realize until this past year when I taught Cyber Foundations 1. I also love traveling and have visited countries such as Romania and Mexico. I went to Romania when I was 15 and 16 as part of a medical mission trip where I was able to assist in providing vacation Bible school to children in the villages we visited. I enjoy singing and dancing. I play guitar, piano, percussion, and a little bit of ukulele. I performed a lot when I was in high school and got an opportunity to play a blue man one. I graduated from the Mississippi School for Mathematics and Science. I was named MVP of the tennis team my senior year. I cheered and participated in all-state show choir. I later went to Ole Miss where I studied art, marched in the color guard, and shot on the collegiate rifle team. While I was there, I was able to meet a lot of cool people like Bradley Cooper, Ellen DeGeneres, Chancellor Kayat, Sam Haskell, and Archie Manning. I received my BA in 2012, a minor in Spanish. After that, I got married. We went on a cruise to the Bahamas for our honeymoon and saw crystal clear waters and visited a pirate museum because we both love Pirates of the Caribbean. My husband is a game warden. Part of his job is capturing alligators and relocating them and transporting hurt animals to wildlife rehabs. He also makes sure hunters and fishermen abide by state laws to preserve the wildlife in the state of Mississippi. We have a miniature pincher named Penny. She is 10 years old. I have two children. Bailey Rose will be five in October and Harrison will be one in September. I received my master's degree in teaching secondary from Mississippi State University in 2016 when Bailey Rose was one year old. I've been teaching since 2013 and started teaching at Oxford Middle School in 2017. I'm so excited for this year and can't wait for all of the exciting things we're going to be doing. Computer science and engineering is a So in this class, we will have six units that we will cover. The first is orientation, safety, and student organizations, project design, introduction to modeling and 3D printing, coding, introduction to electronics, and introduction to robotics. So even though these units are numbered, we won't necessarily be doing them in this specific order. We will start with unit one, and um, because orientation and safety, those things are important for uh, continuing through the rest of the class, but we will uh, move them around a little bit. For the robotics unit, 
we might have the opportunity to compete in a robotics competition. And so um, depending on how things go, the competition is usually in December. And um, it's kind of tentative as to if it will be an in-person competition or a virtual competition, or if some of the classes will even compete at all. So it's a possibility, but no matter what, we will definitely be building a robot to complete a specified task. The way we will grade in this class is based on a point system. The total accumulation of this classwork will equal to 1,000 points. The first unit, second unit, and fourth unit will each be worth 200 points. Units three, five, and six will each be worth 100 points. If you have any question about a grade that you receive, please don't hesitate to ask or send me an email or something because I am human and I do make mistakes. And sometimes I will enter a grade, but it will, um, I'll be thinking that the assignment in Schoology is listed as a different way of grading than the grade that I put in. And so sometimes there's um, human error in that grade. So if you have any confusion about a grade at all, please don't hesitate to bring it up to me. Class procedures. What should you do when entering this class? Whether or not you are here physically or if you are a virtual student, at some point you might be physically in the classroom. And so it's important to know these procedures even if they don't apply to you right now. So the first I expect students to enter class quietly. You'll sit at your desk. Each student, even virtual students, are given an assigned seat to help us mitigate any type of virus exposure. I want you to prepare for five minutes of mindfulness. This mindfulness exercise will give us the opportunity to straighten our minds and get into a place where we are able to learn. Okay, step four, open Schoology and follow the agenda and complete the check-in. In the daily activities folder in Schoology, there is a daily check-in, which is different from the OMS check-in that you'll complete in the mornings. The OMS check-in in the morning asks you questions about whether, whether or not you're feeling healthy or sick, but the check-in that I have for you in the daily activities folder is more concerned about your mental well-being. Um, maybe you need to talk to somebody, but you don't want anybody else to know. This check-in is going to give you the opportunity to reach out because the most important thing to me this year is how you are handling everything that is happening in this world. And um, I wanna make sure that I can provide you with any type of support that you may need. So the second check-in is the daily attendance, and you will complete this whether you are in the school or at home, and you will need to do it during the assigned class time on PowerSchool. Cell phones. All cell phones are to be turned off and should remain in the student's backpack at all times from 7.45 to 3.45 p.m while you are in the school. The first incident is considered a warning and the second incident um, will involve administrative removal of that device. So at the beginning of class, I might remind everybody to make sure your phone is turned off and put in your book bag. And so that will be considered the warning. And so after that, if I see the device, then it will be removed by an administrator. You have no reason to have a cell phone out during class unless it is an emergency and you can talk with me on an individual basis if we have some type of situation like that. Emergency procedures. So again, whether or not you are physically in this class or if you are virtual, it's important to know the emergency procedures because at some point everybody might be physical and these are still good things to know just in case you come back to class or even if you're at home and you have an emergency situation you still want to be able to find the answers to those questions okay so if we have a fire or a fire drill the first thing you should do is listen quietly for instructions 
line up at the back door in a straight line. When told, you'll exit through the back door, walking in a straight line to the grassy area across the parking lot. Then we will wait for further instructions. It is important to stay together so that way we don't lose somebody who might, if there were a fire, be left in the building. So we want to make sure we stay together. During a tornado or tornado drill, it's important to listen quietly for instructions. You'll move to a designated safe place. Depending on how many people we have in class, it might be a couple of different areas. You'll sit quietly, covering your head if it is a warning. If it is just a tornado drill, you don't have to cover your head, but if it is a tornado warning, then it will be important for you to cover your head for safety. The fourth step is to quietly wait for further instructions because we may not be able to hear those instructions if students are talking based on where we are located. For example, in the closet in the audio room that is in our classroom, there is no sound system in there. So if an announcement is made over the intercom, whether it be good or bad, we might not be able to hear it if students are talking. During an earthquake, we should listen quietly for instructions. You'll position yourself under the desk or in a door frame because a door frame is one of the strongest structures. So you'll cover your head and we will wait quietly for further instructions. As of August 25th, 2020, one of the most recent earthquakes near us happened in North Carolina within the last couple of weeks. So an earthquake is more possible today than I think it was maybe 10 years ago. So it's important for us to know what to do during an earthquake, even if we think it may never happen. Active attacker. During an active attacker scenario or drill, you should listen silently for instructions. It's important for us not to talk at all during this point. We will turn off all lights and we will move desks in front of the door. Students will sit or stand silently in one of the closets or in another area that is out of direct line of the door or of exterior walls. A student release form was emailed to parents on Tuesday, August 24th. This student release form is also in Schoology in the Start Here folder, and I also have paper copies if you need a physical copy of this form. So I am working towards my National Board certification. This process requires me to record lessons and submit them um, for viewing, and so because I am recording the lessons, students have to have release forms signed by their parents, either giving permission or denying permission. So there is a place on this form to mark one of those options, either I do or I do not, and then the parent signs it and returns it. You can send it by email. My email address is mlwhite3. Nope, just kidding, mlwhitehead at oxfordsd.org. Or you can have your student submit it to Schoology because there is a place in Schoology in the Start Here folder to submit that. Or you can mail it to the school or have your student drop it off. There are multiple ways to turn this form in, but it does need to be signed by the parent or guardian. Class supplies. So you need to have these items every day. Your iPad, your book bag, something to write with. It can be a pencil or a pen, earbuds or headphones, a water bottle because we cannot drink out of the water fountains at the school. So we need to be able to have a cup to fill up at the water fountain. You'll need to have your mask if you are in the school building. Students should have their masks on at all times unless they are eating during lunch. And you'll also need to have a positive attitude. There are many things happening in this world that we cannot control. And one thing that we can control is our attitude. And I feel like it is so important for us to approach things. You are currently things. the only person in this conference. 
I feel like it is so important for us to approach things with a positive attitude because there's so much negativity that's happening around us. Let's just have this class um, and this time that we have together during the day be a positive experience. So in this activity, I want you to write, if you are physically in class, on a piece of paper, or if you're in Schoology, um, if you're a virtual student, you can complete this in Schoology. The assignment is called Activity, and you should see it in the Start Here folder. Okay, I want you to write me a letter. Tell me who you are, what I should know about you to help me better understand you. Tell me about your favorite and least favorite thing from last year. What are you looking forward to the most about this school year and what you are most anxious about this year? No one else will see this activity um, after you complete it or turn it in. I just want to know a little bit more about you. Like I can ask your friends or your parents about you, but there are things that you can tell me that nobody else can tell me. And so take this as an opportunity to, to kind of let things, let, let us be on the same page, okay? So you have a timer on your screen and I will give you the rest of that time to do this assignment.
You are currently the only person in this conference. Okay, the next assignment that I want you to complete, you can find in the Start Here folder. For this assignment, I want you to look at these two files, okay? We have this file that has all of um, the layout of Oxford Middle School and it has all of the teachers' names on the classrooms. So pull this file up and then I want you to pull this file up. Again, both You are of currently the only person in this conference. Again, both of these files are located in the Start Here folder, okay? So the file with the red arrows shows you which direction the hallways are. During the school day, you can only go one way down the 800 hall. So what classes are located on the 800 hall? We have history classes right here, journalism right here. So. These are some of the classes that you'll be walking to during the day, but you're going to have to walk all the way around and stay on the right side of the hallway. So it's important that you map out where it is that you need to go and how you're going to get there because if you think you're going to take a shortcut going this way down this hall, you're wrong. Okay, so once you have that plan you are more prepared okay and so at this point if you have any questions you can take a moment and write them in the comments or send me a message and I'll be happy to answer those we will also have a weekly questions discussion post if you want to post questions there